Hi, and welcome back to Weekly Dev Tips. I'm your host, Steve Smith, aka R. Dallas. This is episode 39, in which I'll talk a bit about how to make code reviews a little less painful of an experience. If you're enjoying these tips, please leave a comment or rating in your podcast app. Tell a friend about the podcast, or follow us on Twitter and retweet our episode announcements. There are millions of software developers in the world. Help me try to reach a few more of them with these tips. I read an article about a year ago about positive reinforcement in code reviews. It generated a lot of feedback on Twitter, if not in the article itself, so I thought I'd dedicate a weekly Dev Tips episode to the topic. Now a quick word from our sponsor. If you're not advancing as quickly in your career as you'd like, you may find value in joining a semi-formal career and technical coaching program like devbetter.com. I recently launched DevBetter a few months ago, and so far we have a small group of motivated developers meeting every week or two. I answer questions, review code, suggest areas in which to improve, and occasionally assign homework. Interested? Learn more at devbetter.com. I remember when I was still in college, at my first internship, working in a professional software development team. It was at a fairly big company, not too far from campus. The building was a three-story rectangle, the second floor basically a single giant room. You could see out the windows on all sides, but in the middle were cubicles. Hundreds of cubicles. One of these became mine while I worked there. I was given a work computer, a bunch of three-ring binders full of documentation on a shelf, and once a week, there was a code review that I participated in. I say I participated, but the internship only lasted a couple of months, and I spent most of my time fixing relatively simple bugs in C code, along with trying not to fall asleep while working through those documentation binders. Thus, during the weekly code reviews, I mostly just listened. These code reviews were conducted by the development manager. The week's updates were printed out and marked up by hand with questions and suggestions. From my perspective, it was mostly a one-way conversation, though occasionally the more senior developers on the team would have a discussion about the code in question. The reviews weren't particularly insightful to me at the time, but the process itself stuck with me. I understood the intent of the reviews to up the quality of the code, but the process reminded me more of getting an essay back from a professor marked up in red than of a process of teamwork and collaboration. And the relative infrequency of the reviews meant that, more often than not, the printed updates being discussed were no longer current anyway, a fact that often resulted in discussions about whether it was even worth making recommended changes at this point due to the rework it would ultimately require. Over a decade later, I found myself working at another company whose developers were required to conduct code reviews. This team's process was slightly different in that each week a different senior developer on the team took on the reviewer responsibility, and the reviews were done without any discussion or meeting. Once a week, whoever was in the reviewer role would go through the version control history and review all updates made in the past week, or at least since the last reviewer had done the reviews. Any questions, suggestions, or changes were done in the form of to-do comments in the code itself, and emails, or potentially some conversation. There were management mandates that these requests be dealt with in a timely manner. However, it wasn't unusual, due to pressure from deadlines, to cause the review queue to build up, resulting in much more work to review or possibly in abandoning reviews for some period in order to get caught up. In both of these real-world cases, There were two major problems with the code review process. First, it didn't happen fast enough. Frequently, reviews were looking at code that was already days or sometimes even more than a week old, which on projects under active development meant that the team had long since moved on by the time the review was taking place. Second, the reviews felt more like the code author was being graded or evaluated than like the team was working together. Comments might read something like, Fix this. This is a bad name. Come up with something better. You didn't follow the coding standard here. So, what can we do differently today? Here are a few quick tips. Apply the ones that you think will work best for you and your team. First, do code reviews as early as possible. The earliest possible way I know of is by collaborating while you're writing the code. I'm a fan of using pair programming, especially on mission-critical code, and if you've ever asked for a coworker to take a look at what you're doing to help you out, you understand the value of having another team member participating in your process. Code reviews can certainly still be helpful even for code written by a pair, but the pair should catch a lot of problems so early that you may not even realize that you've caught them. 
If collaborating while you code is too extreme for you or your organization, the next best thing is some kind of gated check-ins. Many source control systems support this approach. My favorite at the moment is GitHub, who basically invented the idea and term pull request. A pull request is a conversation that happens about a change before it is made to the main source code branch. Teams I work with today use pull requests and reviews to ensure another team member looks over every PR before it's merged into the project's code base. Usually the time from, hey, can someone take a look at this PR for me, to someone actually reviewing it is under 10 minutes because of things like Slack, notifications, and really tight feedback loops. Of course, maybe you don't want code reviews to happen more often. Maybe you don't want someone to look at your beautiful code and maybe call it ugly right after you've declared it's perfect by checking it in. Part of that might have to do with how your team reviews code. Code reviews are an opportunity not only to catch and fix problems, but also to encourage and recognize the good stuff. Positive reinforcement works and can help make code reviews less painful and thus more useful, as well as providing another way to get your coworkers to write what you think is better code. If a sincere accolade or positive message seems too cheesy for your tastes and is going to ruin your reputation, consider easing up on the negativity by asking more questions and helping the author of the code arrive at a better solution themselves. Instead of saying, this code is a mess, you might say, I'm having a little bit of trouble understanding this code. Could we work to make its intent a little bit more clear? A related approach is to have a face-to-face -face or a separate private IM conversation with the author so you can have a more candid conversation that's not in front of the whole team, or the company, or the world, depending on the scope of who can see the source code. As a rule, it's better to offer praise in public, but harsh criticism is often best done privately, and in any case, it may be that you simply don't have all the information that you need to assess the code. A quick conversation might save you and the code's author a lot of trouble. That's it for this week. If you want to hear more from me, please go to ourdallas.com slash tips to sign up for a free tip in your inbox every Wednesday. I'm also streaming programming topics on twitch.tv slash ourdallas most Fridays at noon Eastern time. Thanks for subscribing to Weekly Dev Tips, and we'll see you next week with another great developer tip.